Hey there everybody, it's Ursula here. I am in the shop right now and we're getting ready for SAF. SAF has gone virtual this year. It's under Missing SAF and you have to join the group and they will um, store all the videos of all the vendors so you can participate in SAF and look at all the vendors and all the wonderful stuff that's available. Um, I am the absolute last vendor going on the show, so um, I imagine everybody will be quite tired by that time. But anyway, today we're here on YouTube, and I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what I do and um, how I do it. So a lot of people ask me, well, geez, are you out in the country? Do you raise sheep? Do you raise angora rabbits, um, you know, alpacas? And I'm like, no, that's not me. I live in the city, but I still have a fiber shop. And I don't buy and resell. What I do is natural dyes. So from here, we're going to take you out to the yard, to the garden, and look at all the different natural dyes that are out there right now, even though winter's hit most of the country already. So let's take a look. Okay, we're out in the front yard. Yep, we're out in the front yard, and this is Japanese indigo. Um, this is new for me. I am waiting for this to finish flowering and going to seed, so hopefully we can get an even bigger crop next year. Um, Japanese indigo is best dyed fresh. At least it's the easiest without having to titrate chemicals and so forth. Um, but it can be dried and it can be used um, just like you would regular um, processed indigo. Um, you can see all these beautiful flowers. I'm looking forward to a bigger crop next year. I think I only got four plants this year. And let's take a look at what else we got in the garden. Okay, you can dye with marigolds. I have an abundance of marigolds. I Honestly, I didn't plant this many. They just kind of grew, popped up, and I decided to leave them as they were. They make a great border, and they're great fall color. Um, I'm going to do a marigold dye bath in another week. Um, I've got one soaking in the back, and I'll start cooking it down and winding skeins after sap is over. But this is a great fall um, dye stuff and it definitely grows here in the city. This one's past its prime right now, but this is Dyer's Coreopsis, and you can see it's already going to seed. There's not much left to it. Um, it makes a great dye. I also have Calendula. Sometimes I'll mix these depending on what's, what's ripe, uh, what's available, what's flowering, what's blooming. I use the blooms on these. Um, this nasty thorn bush is called Barberry, and you can dye with that too. That gives you um, a pretty basic brown. Um, and then, let's see what else we got going okay, on. Okay, these are amaranth. Um, most of them have gone to seed. I've been harvesting the seed for grain. It's kind of like quinoa, but if you get the flower before it goes to seed, um, you can use it in a dye bath and you can get some amazing shades of pink, but there's a trick to getting it color fast and we're still working on that one. This is another one of my favorites. This is oregano and oregano is coming back around a second time. It's, it's bloomed, died back and it's on its way to start growing again. This is the, the flower head and the bees absolutely love this, but oregano gives me a nice sort of khaki brown that I just really love. You can't get that color from any other plant, or at least I haven't been able to. So I really enjoy using oregano for my browns. And this is another dye bath. It's gonna give me brown. The traditional um, Irish name for it is crottle. It is um, basically a lichen that I've been soaking in ammonia. It's been sitting in here and it's got quite a lot of pigment in it. So let me show you what that comes from. Go 
over here to the wood pile. And I don't know. Let me see if I can hold the camera a little more steady. There we go. That is a type of parmelia. It's a lichen. This is all dead wood. We got a tree go down. And I save this. I scrape it off. You can see these are just covered in it. Uh, it happens to like the Siberian elms, which were planted here way back when Dutch elm disease hit. And um, it's, it, it, it literally, those trees throw wood. And their wood is always covered in lichen. So we're going to use this in a dye bath, and it works best with ammonia. And this is the next dye bath in progress. They're soaking right now. I've got the uh, marigolds from the front yard, and I've got onion skins because onion skins will not will uh, make this a little more color fast. Um, the marigolds tend to fade a little bit. They are a permanent dye, but it fades from a bright yellow to a honey yellow. And in order to avoid that, I've thrown in some onion skins to um, to help that out to be a little more color fast. And lastly, this is tarragon. This has been my prime workhorse this year. For whatever reason, it loved the weather this year and just really, really produced a lot of dye. So you're gonna, we're gonna go inside now and take a look at some of the um, colors that we got out of all of back this. Back in the shop, let's see what we got with these natural dyes now. Um, I just picked up an organic wool and I have it available for those of you who want to dye yourself. Yeah, we're going to check out how, how many shadows I have this time of night. Um, this is the undyed, and it's in 100 gram skeins. This one is, um, all the rest of these are 4 ounce skeins. This one happens to be dyed in coffee. And then going down a level, we've got two different shades of cochineal. Got a whole two pounds of matter orange, all from the same dye bath, although um, they do variegate a little bit. And then this one will be rhubarb. This one here, tarragon. This is from spring. This is tarragon from fall. And you can see the difference. This one is um, got an all mordant. This one is a copper mordant. So it gives you a very different shade. Moving down, I have some superwash. These are a fingering weight. And again, I have the undyed in case you want to do some of your own. Um, we have cochineal. We have matter. This is the second remove of matter. This is the third remove of matter. And then we go on, we've got rhubarb. Rhubarb gave us this beautiful bronze color. And then moving on down here. This is coffee. This is Osage orange. It's the heartwood of the tree. Um, I met a woodworker who was getting rid of some of his sawdust. Um, this one's tarragon, and this one is also tarragon. So again, you can see the spring shade in all of them, and then this was done in fall with um, copper. And then we have some of the organic minis. These are 25 gram skeins, um, and these are just whatever was left over that actually made a decent sized skein. Um, I guess since we're down here, we'll start with the um, Jaggerspoon Heather. Now, I actually did start dyeing some of these myself. Um, this is Dyer's Coreopsis, um, but the rest are actual Jaggerspoon colors um, from their color chart. I happen to like them in two ounce size balls because two ounces um, is is really good for weaving and that's really what we do here is weaving. We also use these in some of the hats. Um, 
to give you a glance at the hats. We do knitted felted hats as well. And these are done with multiple strands um, using the zephyr and the heather and then um, usually a, a sport or DK weight yarn to go with it. And we get a lot of different shades that way using multiple yarns. Um, this is my hand spun. This is mohair. And these two are a two ply superwash fingering weight. This one is dyed in logwood. This one is dyed in tarragon. All right. And then from here, we'll go up. And sorry about that. <laughs> I don't have anybody else helping me with the camera work here. Um, this scarf is dyed with um, alkanet and blended with some of the heather um, Jagger spun Heather uh, in Blackberry and the two pair very very nicely okay um, this is our prime alpaca we discovered that for people who are allergic to wool but still want to work with a wool like substance um, prime alpaca is coming out of Peru these are undyed natural colors from the alpacas themselves and you can see um, we have a white a silver this is called mist gray charcoal and black and moving over here I have periwinkle just shadows. Um, periwinkle is the name of the wool, not the color. It's undyed. It's a um, thick, thin wool. Technically, it's listed as bulky. Um, it works really great on the um, triangle loom. And then in my super washes, which is what this wall is, um, I only have one left in the, D in the DK weight, and that is in walnut. And then down here, I have three rows of cochineal. This is all worsted weight yarn. And then after the cochineal is matter, then tarragon, a lot of tarragon. Down here we have Osage orange. We have a coreopsis blended with some um, onion skins. Um, this and these guys here are two different batches of coffee. Um, I use the, I get free grounds from Starbucks for the garden and when they give me the um, cold brew, since it hasn't been boiled, it still has a lot of dye in it. So I use that. The neighbors love my yard. It smells wonderful. <laughs> and then down here I have some bulky. I have, um, the first one is cochineal, the second one in is matter, and it turned out more brown than orange. Um, again, for those of you who want to try your own dyes, I have a bulky superwash in natural. And the variegated gold is coreopsis. And then I have more coffee, and I have some walnut. And that's it for that wall. Let me move on over to the notions. Most of what you see here is on Etsy, um, in my Etsy store. Again, it's Ursula's yarn.etsy.com. And um, these are clasps, so you can use these for shawls or cloaks, or if you're sewing vests, they work really well. Um, this is an acanthus leaf. This is a traditional um, Greek style um, relief. Um, this one I, I call a door knocker because it didn't have a name and it reminded me of a door knocker. 
but it's just really a big loop that has another piece that hooks into it. Again, it's a clasp. And these are the um, traditional Norwegian double circle clasps. And down here, these are penannulars. They're made um, by a friend of mine in North Carolina. And um, they're a traditional Celtic design. He also makes a Viking style fibula. These would have been used in ancient times to fasten garments together, kilts and so forth. Um, I have some buttons. And then he's also done some pins. This is a based on a Roman horse. Um, this is an Anglo-Saxon shield with a garnet in the center. Again, uh, the penannulars. This one is a ribbed penannular. You can see that the ribs on it, they help keep the pin from sliding around. Um, this is also a pin. It's a rabbit, a Roman style rabbit. Um, again, another penannular. This one's a slightly bigger size. And then I have some um, silver tone. These are stainless um, and zinc um, fibulas. And that's a small size. This is a dragoness, dragonesque style pin. I have that in blue and then I also have it in I have it in yellow. I think this one's green. It's really hard to tell in this light, isn't it? Um, this is a, a penannular which has been um, had little triangles pounded into it. That was a a very early style of design when embellishing your work to make things look fancier. These are buttons. Or if you want to think of, um, maybe you have a, a, a sweater or a jacket that you just want to put a button that hooks, that has a loop that hooks over it. So you would stitch this edge down and then have a loop on the other side that hooks around this. And you can see that that's offset, so you can put the loop around it. The same goes for this, this style. These are enamel. And we've got one in blue. I suppose you could also hang those as a pendant for a necklace. They're really nice. They're all handmade. We've got a blue Roman rabbit. And another Roman horse. This one's green with a white eye. This is a slightly bigger fibula. It's a little bit longer than the other ones. This one is a really tiny um, clasp. These are nice if you have a very thin um, shawl or scarf that you've made that you want to pin, but you don't want a heavy weight on it. And that's it Except for these guys. I also carry uh, little scissors, which are nice to keep in your kit. I have, this one here is a stork. See the stork? And this is just a plain scissors. And they come in these nice little pouches so they can, you, you know, protect your work so they don't get stabbed. And then these are um, remainders, discontinued yarns. that I, They're still made, but I'm discontinuing them. Um, this is a wool silk blend 50-50. It's a 4-8 thread, and it is, I only have a limited number of colors. I have, uh, the pink is Cassis. I think the, the gray silver tone is called Pewter. This right here is called Chrome. This one back here is Daffodil. And this one right here is Garnet. All right. We're not going to go into the hats. I do make hats, knitted felted hats, and I have never sold these at SAF before. Normally we do fairy festivals, uh, medieval reenactment, um, renaissance festivals, and so forth, but 
We'll give you a look-see since you can see them in the background. I did another video, which I'll put a link to, um, going into trying on hats and sizing them. All right, so those are the hats. Now, I'm gonna try and get through this whole thing here. Um, this is linen. I have linen coming out of Europe. The top shelf, the uh, top shelf is 40 slash two. It's a thread weight linen. This is all I have left. This is set to be re, uh, redone, redyed, all new colors and so forth. What I have is a dark red, a saffron, a marine blue, and boysenberry. There is also natural gray available and bleached ivory, which is not shown in this basket, but we do have them. Um, and this is what the natural gray and the bleached ivory look like, only thinner in the 40 slash 2. This is 16 slash 2 here. This is a slightly thicker yarn. And what I have in it, as you can see, is a natural gray, the bleached white, the dark red, the peach, marine blue, a mint, and back here I have a navy, a charcoal, a boysenberry, and I have a couple of the saffron left. And that's what I've got in the linen. And then down here, what you see is the 10-3 um, hemp. It's a little bit thicker than the linen above it. It behaves the same way. It's um, a little bit more rustic. Every once in a while, you'll find a slub or two. Um, this is how it knits up. You can see that has some some nice drape to it. I mean, that just, I really want to either a skirt in that or maybe a tank top myself. Um, I tried out a light brown just to see what it would do. And so this is not a natural. This is actually um, called phosphate. And then next to it is uh, burgundy. And we have a nutmeg in the back. We have something called grass green. Let's see if we can get this to focus better. There we go. We've got a purple, raisin, peach, charcoal, or possibly slate. What do I call it? That's a charcoal. And that's the natural, and that's the bleached ivory. So those are all up on Etsy. Ursula's yarn.etsy.com. And then down here, I have a Zephyr in the um, 218 thickness. It's, it's real thin, it's lace weight. As you can see, I, I have a, a scarf back here, which I need to hang. This is based on a pattern called the Springtime Bandit, which is on Ravelry. You can look it up. Um, one ball yarn can do at least seven rows, and with some to spare, maybe even eight rows. You're gonna have to swatch it though, so you can see how yours, this was done with a size two needle. And then, you can see all the different colors that we have. These are not on Etsy um, because these are coming from Jaggerspun. Jaggerspun does not allow um, their their yarns to be sold on Etsy, so we'll be opening our own webpage very soon. But you can see here it card weaves beautifully too. This is card weaving. And then over here I have hemp in the 10-6 thickness. This is on Etsy. They make great market baskets. So you can make your own market bag. And also, um, this is just a sampler in a mitered square. 
but um, they make great washcloths. They're great gifts for Christmas. Uh, do up a little wash set of washcloths with these. Um, they're real popular. And then I have Irish lace. That's some more card weaving. That's available too. And a, a, a lot of this is for people who are just plain cannot do wool. I mean, there's an amazing number of people who can't work with wool, and, and we understand that. Um, this one happens to be an organic, let's see if we can get that in focus, an organic cotton called Inca. It's out of Peru. Uh, it's based on a plant that does not need pesticides or herbicides, so uh, it's naturally resistant which American cotton is not. Um, and then this is more of the Irish lace. The Irish lace is an 80% cotton, 20% linen. And what they've done with it, zoom in here a little bit, is it's a boucle, is they've used the natural color linen to tie the, the, to make the little bumps instead of a nylon thread, they use linen. And it's coming out of Ireland. It's a beautiful yarn to work with. I've woven with it. I love it as a weft. Um, I don't know that I'd do it as a warp because that, putting that under tension, I don't like putting boucles under tension. That's, that's a recipe for disaster. But it knits up nice too. And then... What I've got over here is um, gave myself a challenge one year to do as many colors as I could with what I had. And I think there's 60 or 70 different um, pieces of yarn that are all different. Every single one is slightly different from the others. So um, you can see this one here, it's a light green. It's made with, it's made from carrot tops. So um, these are 12 and a half grams. It's about 154 yards. They're 100% wool. It's a warp twist means that it's been um, spun tighter so that it holds tension a little better. Um, if you're weaving with it and also if you want to um, use it for for hand stitching it's it's going to be a little stronger it's not waxed though all right and then this particular one is up on Etsy um, I dyed the yellow with rhubarb I did an indigo um, that's either matter or cochineal and then I over dyed an indigo with yellow to get a green. So that one is set up as a set on Etsy right now. Any of the others, you're going to have to give me a holler. Tell me what shades you're interested in. And I can shoot you some pictures of those shades and with numbers. And you can tell me which ones you want. Okay. Now we're going to take a look real quick at the books I have. Sprang. Unsprung. That's my last copy that's up on Etsy right now. The rest of these, if you're interested in any of the titles, you're going to have to drop me a line. Um, Get Spun is a new book. Well, new old book. It, it was pr A lot of these were printed by Interweave Press, and Interweave has um, changed hands a couple times here. So um, a lot of these aren't available anymore, but we have copies that are new. The one that isn't new, the one that is used is this spinning designer yarns by Diane Varney and I will say it is fun to learn how to do different types of spinning okay and then normally at SAF excuse my coffee mug there but um, normally at SAF I have um, a huge display with uh, weaving and looms and everything um, up here in in the the attic studio there's just not room for them 
So what I do have are some really cool Wicked shuttles, um, some regular 12 inch rigid heddle shuttles. I think I only have medium and small in the bone size shuttles right now. Um, Lucettes, and then I've got some assorted wood wood shuttles for inkle weaving. These do have an edge on them. Let's see if we can get that in there in the shot. It's always really hard. So you can see it has a nice edge to it. You can beat with that and get a nice crisp edge. I do have bone needles. Um, these are great for knoll bending. They're nice if you're trying to do a, a medieval or other reenactment display where, where you want to show um, how things were done in history. Um, some actually have sharp pointy tips and others are um, tapestry, they're, they're a duller point. It depends what you're doing with them. If you're knoll bending, which is what this is, you want something that um, is not sharp on the tip. Mm. A couple more books. Those are all used. Um, English costume. This one is a book on the Tudors. England under the Tudors. And that's what we've got in stock. So I hope you enjoy your day. And hope to talk to you later.